Welcome in to Roller Line I here on WPGU 1071 and UPTV is here just under a frame of our logo on the wall. Uh, quick question, shouldn't the lens kind of be open on that camera? <laughs> or is it close uh, to... <laughs> well, James, you're very observant. <laughs> Perfect timing. I could try to look. <laughs> Oh, no, this chair's falling apart. Oh, we've got all types oh of issues my goodness. this Friday oh. evening. Welcome but. in to Rolling Line. We have things breaking <laughs> as we speak. <laughs> Anyways, James Boyd is here right across from me. Alex Aguilera is here producing. Oh, yeah, running the board for our man, Will Gerard. He is out getting paid to do what he loves to do today. And it's not being with us. <laughs> actually. <laughs> little ribs out there. <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, he's on a, a freelance photog job, so he is shooting high school, correct, James? Yes, high school boys basketball. And I forgot where he said it was, but it's a little bit of a ride, from what, if I remember correctly. It was, I want to say, maybe two or three hours away, so he's okay. got a little ride. All right, well, let's slide to... Maybe. It wasn't even on to begin with. Alex fixed the camera, too. Nice. Anyways. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Sorry, I'm new. Adversity I'm new. builds I'm... character. Yes. Yeah, so, I'm new here. Yeah, Alex, <laughs> our audience is not familiar with you, but tell us, Alex, who are you? <laughs> um, so I'm Alex Aguilera. Um, some of you have heard me before. I'm... The, I'm also the producer of A Light I Drive on the TNT crew Tuesdays and Thursdays. So yeah, so I'm familiar with the with the producer board back here, but with oh, this show, I'm a little bit new. So all right, that's all right. I'm just here for the ride. Yeah, we're all here for the ride. <laughs> um, so we've got some wheelchair basketball stuff to talk about. Um, there are some more games. Last Saturday, didn't get to talk about those on the show last week because they hadn't happened yet. <laughs> but they've happened now. Um, so, we'll focus on the women's team. I think they had an interesting outcome because they went, actually, 2-1. and one. Yeah, they were 2-1 and one with a two-point loss. So, they were right there to, to kind of, to kind of you, know, to sweep, you know, sweep things. But they played yeah. pretty well from what I was uh, able to see from last weekend. Right, so I know from just from my observations, it seems we're still uh, seeing a team that is trying to learn the basics of the game because the communication is not there. You hear Stephanie Wheeler advocating for communication during the games. She communicates a uh, lot. Are you intimidated by Stephanie Wheeler? <laughs> not intimidated. I'm just <laughs> respe- I'm respectfully, you know, yeah, a little, a little, a little shaky when I'm around <laughs> her. <laughs> just, uh, that's... That's a good call. Um, you yeah, admire her passion, but so it can be a little bit intimidating. Yeah, I mean, she, I'm serious. We, t- we talk about communication, but she is the loudest voice almost all the time when you're, when you're watching that team. And, 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 and it's needed for the most part because they don't have uh, that, those, you know, those, those people that have been in the program for a very long time. So mm-hmm. for the newer ones, she's barking out orders, and it's kind of just like do what she says because she has gold medals. <laughs> I will listen. Um, we saw, going back to the basics, we saw a lot of bad passes from Illinois. We saw passes to teammates that are not looking, or passes to teammates that look at the last minute, and then they just are too late to grab the ball, and it bounces off their hands or their wheels. So not good, kind of sloppy. We have another tournament next week, an away tournament not here. Both teams will be there. And that's the last tournament of the season for both teams until the National Wheelchair Basketball Championship Tournament at SMSU up in Minnesota. I will not be there. Don't plan on it. I have no intentions of being there. (laughs) So let me ask you this, Ryan. I know last week was also senior night. Um, So as far as someone like Michael Mitchell on the men's side, 
Um, and I want to say maybe just one other senior for the men's Spencer right. Heslop. Exactly. He's the other one. I knew it wasn't many. Both teams are very mm-hmm. young. Um, what's your relationship been like with him? And, and kind of, we had him on earlier this year, but over the years, um, seeing him kind of go through the program and, 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 and also Spencer as well and, and call it a day. Yeah. All right. That's a show. <laughs> <laughs> No, no uh, Michael Mitchell's a good guy. I really enjoyed talking with him. He can sing. I've heard him sing. He can dance. I've seen him dance. Yeah. He can get pretty into it sometimes. <laughs> I know uh, last year when I wrote for the Daily Line I hear, I have since stopped doing that. But last year when I did and covered the team, he gave me a quote that was like, practices are so boring, but with, i got to add some fun some way. Well, his coaches were not a fan of that quote. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. okay. He gave us the honest answer yeah. because most of the time as sports journalists, as we all in this room know, yeah. and yeah. That obviously you, Alex, from being at uh, all the men's basketball oh, press conferences, with, yeah, there's yeah. always the, you know, both teams play hard, you know, yeah. it's like 110%. Cliche, you know, then we get Michael. You just got to go out there and play better, man. Exactly. Gotta do. I'm just like, oh, my God. And then Michael yeah. gives us something real, and then he gets ripped for it. So. <laughs> At least we got that exclusive scoop before he yeah. left. Yeah. yeah, I was sitting down in Maureen Gilbert's office one day. She's kind of the AD of the program, and, and she was not too happy about that <laughs> quote. And I'm just like, well, I kind of did say you it. Gotta run it. Hey. <laughs> yeah. You gotta run it. You gotta run it. Yeah. Oh, and there was another one. Uh, he talked about punching Whitewater in the face. That was just a, an analogy. No. Yeah, I don't think that's very good for. <laughs> no, oh, that's okay. no. I was like, oh wait, <laughs> an analogy to, to beat them, not to literally punch him in the face. Not not yeah. great. I was gonna say his arms are kind of. Yeah, I was like, my knowledge of wheelchair <laughs> basketball here at Illinois is not extensive, but man, yeah. <laughs> so perfect one I'm hearing, it's, right? It can get really physical. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah. Wow. Right. There's always a a, a line there. A we line try to there. spice up the show sometimes. <laughs> All right. But speaking of Whitewater and Illinois on the men's side, we did see Illinois match up against Whitewater on the last game of the tournament, and Illinois lost by quite a big margin. Um, Whitewater is just bigger, better, and faster, and more skilled. They have shooters; they can make some threes pretty easily. Uh, Spencer is kind of the main shooter for Illinois, and when he's on the bench, it doesn't make a big difference, but it does affect their scoring. And they don't move as fast, because Spencer can make some assists, get some points and rebounds, but they don't have another player who can do all of that at the same time. So he will be missed by Illinois. I know they're going to bring in some some, uh, newer players here, sign some newer players in a couple weeks. Got some stuff about that from Will Gerard. Maybe he'll bring that on the show next week. Stay tuned for Will Gerard. <laughs> the return. Yeah. yeah. Yes. He, he return. does a better job than I do. I'm just going to sit here and just enjoy the show. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think Will's got competition. He hmm? ditched us. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking that personally. You think he ditched us? Oh, I know he did. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's the he's the, he's a guy that loves to have the camera around his neck, and yes. he's honestly good at it. I I, I'm an honest person. I would honestly tell him if he wasn't, but he's very good at it. The pictures he took of his past uh, World right. Basketball tournament were pretty good. So yeah, so do check those pictures out on our Facebook page at Rolling Line. I where else? And on Twitter at Rolling Line. I where else? <laughs> <laughs> I just find that hilarious. So convenient, man. Right. <laughs> the, the shameless plug. You should never be ashamed of it. No. So do like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Pin us on Pinterest. What else can you do? I will say Snapchat. But Snapchat's, you know, it's not been very oh, no. good lately. So Tumblr. We'll take a pass. Tum- Tumblr. Tumblr. <laughs> Tumblr. <laughs> MySpace, if you still got it. Yeah, if it ever yeah. emerges again, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. they could put us on your top five on MySpace. There you go. <laughs> And also at the tournament was a guy named Josh Feinbaum. So do tell us, James, you and Will spoke with him last night. Tell us about Josh. Run us through who Josh is. Give us the life story. Of yeah, I Josh gave you that Feinbaum. look, Ryan, because I, honestly, I forgot it was yesterday. It was man, this week's <laughs> been going back crazy. I was like, what was yesterday? Yeah, yeah we um we sat and talked to him um yesterday evening, I believe, and honestly, just he was the. Um, photojournalist that did a book about the 
um, Illinois men's basketball, uh, wheelchair basketball program, and covered their net, covered with them wings, uh, a couple of different um, national championships. And we just kind of dug into his life and asked him how he got started because he's um, an alum of Illinois, and he also worked here at Daily Line I. Um, but he majored in aerospace engineering, but is a photojournalist full time. And we're like, and he teaches it now at a different university. And we're like, how the heck did you get from, <laughs> you know, basically a whole other side of campus to doing journalism? He, t- he told us that he um, developed a, a love of journalism kind of later on in his college life. And by that time, he figured he would just finish getting his degree in aerospace engineering because it's, you know, just that easy. I'll just finish, you know. It's not a big deal. And then he got his uh, graduate degree in photojournalism, and he's been doing it ever since. And he did the, uh, like, the Dream Shop book, which covered the team. And, and he said one of his passions was just to um, – one of his points of interest were to cover athletes and Paralympic athletes because he felt like they're, they're underrepresented and, and, and oftentimes misrepresented. So he wanted to kind of show how – empowering and uplifting it can be to see someone you know do amazing things as athletes so it was a good interview he was a he's a good guy yes you talk about powering empowering and uplifting um what did he learn from this book and interviewing all these athletes one thing he said to me and then also just in general he was saying as an able-bodied person it was important not only for um people with disabilities to see Paralympic athletes do what they do, but for able-bodied individuals as well, to not look at them as like, you know, some charity case or basket case in a sense. It's like, oh no, like this, although they can't do this, they're still very good at this and they can still mm-hmm. do this or they might do it a different way. So that was very enlightening for, to, to hear. And also, um, I think something that's important for others to, to kind of understand and kind of take away from his, his work. And he also said he has a couple of other different projects he's working on now and they range and span from like he does the Paralympic thing and then he also covers musicians sometimes and he was saying he'll he'll just go go and literally do anything that he he said he'll pick something he doesn't know doesn't know doesn't know anything about and then kind of just figure out hey if if I can take pictures of it maybe I can learn more about it and also share that story so Mm -hmm. he's got a couple different things going on and it was honestly cool to, to talk to a guy that I, has a lot of power when they take pictures, in a sense, and um, and, and kind of get pick his brain and see what makes a good shot, what makes a bad shot, and, mm-hmm. and things like that. Because I am not the uh, esteemed photog such as Will Gerard is. Sure. So is his book a picture book, or is there text? Or where it's, can we find this book? Please? Oh my goodness, where can we find this book? Um, Everywhere. Internet. The, the truth. Of, I mean, I mean, yeah, that's, that's like the easy real, answer, and, and for the most part, it is, a, it is a photo book, and it just covers. It just, um, you know, uh, kind of gives you a visual representation of what they went through that season. I asked him um, because I'm more of a written um, or a writer, and, and we talk on the radio show every week. I was asking him like, I would be kind of like scared to tell a story just through pictures and like you know maybe a couple words of a caption, and he said like that kind of you know, teaches you to have patience and, and getting that right shot. And, and, and also when you're evaluating which shot you want to shoot or which one, shot you want to keep, which shot you want to throw away, which pitch you want to like, you know, push forward. He was saying like, you have a lot of power in that. And, and, I and it that. was, I get that. Yeah. It was honestly interesting I, to hear. I get, yeah. I get that. So as the photo guy over here, the video guy over here, you get, yeah. you got to choose stuff. Yeah, we can yeah, just write. Yeah. 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 I mean, for, for basketball that I've done, I mean, some of the basketball videos I've been able to do, I mean, we take, I do it with Eli Schuster as well. Sometimes I have to go through like 300 clips and I have to pick, pluck out maybe like 11. So, I mean, it can be difficult, but yeah, it's just a matter of finding just that right shot. <laughs> this man literally said 11. I thought he was going to say like, you know, I got to pick like 50, like 11 out of 300. No, it's like a minute video and you figure like maybe, maybe two, okay, maybe 11 is a little bit small, maybe like 20. Man, that's, but, that's yeah. still like, and that's another thing. When we, we get, like, a word count, so I, I can get, like, you know, 600 words, but for you, no one, in our, in our, also in the, in the society we live in now, no one's trying to watch anything over, like, a minute. Right. So it's kind of like you got to get the, get the good ones and, and mm-hmm. show them off. So. Mm-hmm. And you talk about the perspective of Josh, God, from covering the team. I do think there's a lot of value in kind of jumping into Paralympic sports and Initially, I think people look at these athletes and, and see the cheers, see that they can't walk, and see the things that they can't do. But when you get in the sport and you see that 
Michael Mitchell can lift 325 pounds. Former producer Man Kane can lift around 300. Um, as James, I think you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, you do. yeah. <laughs> that, once upon a time, I a did a traumatizing experience. Yeah, I did a workout with Kane, and, and, and once upon a time, I told myself I'd never do it again. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how y'all dragged me into these things. Like I did the, I did the wheelchair basketball workout, and then I did the sled hockeying, which was that looked fun. Oh, that was fun, but I got my butt <laughs> kicked. I, I remember this like this eight year old kid was like, "You want to race?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." Like, race that go, and he's just like, "You're cheating." I'm like, I like fell over to start. And then he's like, <laughs> he's, just he's like, oh, right. I'm like, I'm trying to like figure out how to like balance the thing, and he's like, "Want to go again?" I'm like, "Go again." I just got, got I just got back up. So. But um, again, th- those those moments and those opportunities, whether it's pictures, whether it's doing it, whether it's talking about it, um, getting a different perspective is important. So, talking to him about how he finds his niche in that is it was pretty cool. Yeah, kind of like our show. There is uh, there are a lot of people in the U.S. and in the world who focus on the Paralympic sports over the Olympic sports, um, just because I think some people who get into it. Uh, prefer Paralympic sports over the Olympics. Um, it's because they're fun. I like it. But see, I'd say so. Like, if, yeah. you, if you get into it, I mean, Ryan can attest to this. When we were at um, the ARC last weekend covering basketball, I was – first time I got to cheer in a while, actually, because I yeah, – yeah, I don't remember the last yeah, time I Yeah, I was going to say, as the, as the – you know, being at the while. men's basketball games and all the other stuff we have to cover – we have to be so neutral, even though we go to Illinois, which is ironic in no sense. But I got to cheer, and I was yelling and screaming. And then after a while, I'm, I'm thinking, hey, that's a bad pass. Like, you got to cut. Like, how you get beat back door? I'm like, right. it's, it's, it's. And after a while, you just think, hey, the game is still the same. The ball has to go through the hoop when it comes to, obviously, basketball. So I loved it. I, I'm all, you know me, I, I'm, a, I'm a bucket man. Yeah. So it was so, fun. So for you, James, and maybe – Alex, you can chime in if you would like. Um, but I know, uh, James, you had not been too familiar with wheelchair basketball prior not to the all. show, right? So what if you learned about maybe para-athletes or athletes with impairments since our show, just to like make my head even bigger? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, I have a hard time getting in the door. Yeah, I'm like, this. it's come a long way from the, uh, the I think it was a random text or email in the summer when you asked me to come on the show, and I was yeah. like, well, like, I've gotten this far, like, so far by yeah. saying yes to pretty much everything. So I said yes. And I think what I've learned the most, um, well, when it comes specifically to wheelchair basketball, is that there's classifications for different players on the court. Like, you can only have a certain point um, uh, number or point limit on the court at the same time because mm-hmm. different players, depending on their mobility and, and, and the, and the uh, degree of their disability, can only uh, are, are, are ranked differently as far as points. So I didn't know that. Because I was thinking, if if you just if you're just in a chair, you can play, um, you know, you can compete in Paralympic um, sports and in basketball. So that was a learning experience, and also just the different little technical things when it comes to what's a foul, what's not a foul. Because I do referee basketball here, so I'd look and see like, okay, this player got you know got their chair pushed over, that's not a foul. But then they got their wheel hit a certain way, that is a foul. So it was just interesting to see how the game meshes but the little nuances that make it different. Because it's really not that different. Like, a foul is still a foul, like you, even though they're bigger and, and stronger up top than, mm-hmm. than most players. Um, it, it was interesting to see that. And also a lot of representation just all around the board, I think in Paralympic sports in general. Um, look at the court, black, white, male, female. We also, we had, I think it was Auburn had a team, all guys, and they had, they had a girl on their team. And I was like, mm-hmm. that you can do that? And you're like, yeah. And I'm like, what? Like, so <laughs> it's just learning about the opportunities and sometimes the limited opportunities that people have. And, and, and that, that obviously for, uh, kind of forced that girl to be, try to be a part of the men's team. But at the same time, it, it gave an opportunity to be, be represented and have a good time and enjoy a sport that a lot of people love. So I have learned a lot and I'm willing to learn more because I feel like every time I learn something, there's something else, and I'm like, okay, like even it's just keep that curiosity. Right, he, he we interviewed uh, the uh, I'm blank the I mean, Al- Alpine skier. We've interviewed Madison Bauman, Robbie Druggin. Like, I'm like this guy. 
goes down hills and, and, and skis and, and slopes with a guide. And I'm like, I wouldn't do this with anybody. Yeah. Like, so mm. just learning about the stuff that they love to do and, and the dangers that sometimes come with it. And when it comes to that type of sport and still, still wanting to do it, still wanting to get back up, even if you get, you know, knocked down and got your head banged around a couple of times like Robbie did. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, it, it's, it's cool. It mm. is honestly very cool. And, and I think perspectives are important especially in, in our field of work as journalism. Yeah, I, I do feel that the Paralympic movement is a very accepting movement and welcoming movement. So if somebody wants to play the game, we'll figure a way out. Yeah. I, yeah, it's it's cool. I mean, my knowledge of Paralympic sports isn't vast. They're great, but I have seen, you know, competitions. Like I remember last Winter Olympics in Sochi, I remember watching actually some uh, Paralympic hockey and the U.S. men's hockey team. I was just like, Man, like these guys are good. Like I can't yeah. even ice skate. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. but you know, I think just and also to like um, James when you did that video, what the oh with, yeah, with, uh, Kane. yeah, yeah, with that guy. Um, yeah, I mean, I just gained so much admiration, so much respect for these people because you know, regardless of their disabilities, they're still able to play the sport that they love and. You know, just the workout regimens, you know, they... they <laughs> the workout they, regimens. It's just, yeah. they. it's not like, oh, we take it easy. No, they take it serious like any other athlete, regardless, you know, or whatever. So, yeah, you know, I, I think it's definitely something I would even like to learn about even more moving forward. Well, looks like you need a workout buddy, James. Hey, man. You and Kane. <laughs> me and Kane are an interesting pair, I'll say that. <laughs> I think he purposely wanted to just, just put me in pain <laughs> that day. And I mean, he definitely succeeded, but I was talking. And you know me, I, I was I was talking all types of trash, like, "Oh, this oh, ain't gonna be geez. nothing." Like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, That's whatever, you, lift it, like lift it, do, do what ten times. And then I was like, "Okay," after the first three or four workouts, I'm like, "All right, like, cool, we done." Like, nah, we not done. What you mean, we not done? <laughs> like, only my arms are only so big. Mm-hmm. I mean, my, I'm done. So my my arms telling me they done. So why are we doing more? Right. <laughs> um, I hadn't felt that feeling since high school. Usually when I'm tired, I just stop. Mm. So all jokes aside, that was definitely a cool one. And um, it was one honestly that video that we posted went everywhere. It got like mm-hmm. over a thousand views. And, and yeah, and we're and, celebrities. Yeah, just a little bit. But that was yeah. fun. Like and that and that I think a lot of people just didn't know it. And also, you know, a little. Twitter or Facebook link, just just post the video. Don't don't post a link to you. Just post the video. But like once it just starts playing, everyone's like, oh, like yeah. since it's playing already, I'll just watch it. Right. And I think I, a lot, I had a lot of people tell me like they had no clue about it and they were laughing at me and but also learning at the same time. So that was fun. Right. Yeah, so it's not something you see every day. Yeah. Yeah. And I know I was doing a little Skype conversation with a good friend in Germany this morning. And she is part of the IPC, Paralympic mm. Committee. Mm, Germany, and exotic. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, Bond, Germany, place to be. Anyways, I was just talking about how I love how with the Paralympic movements and kind of our job with the IPC and our job here with Rowan One I is to connect with the, the athletes and the people, our listeners, you guys at home. They're driving in your car or... However you're listening. In your basement, <laughs> alone, in your bathroom, in your shower. Waterproof. Maybe you're in the grocery store. <laughs> yeah, you're working out. Our voice is playing over the grocery store. <laughs> we sound like God. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're, anyways, I like how I, we can connect with people and yeah. start a conversation about other people. Yeah, another point I like to uh, make about um, Josh... How do you say his last name again? Bur- fine bomb. Fine bomb. Oh, fine bomb. Yeah, the, the kid is struggling, right? <laughs> I'm struggling. Yeah. But anyways, Josh also knew um, the head coach of the men's uh, wheelchair basketball team, Matt Butchie, for I think he said ten years now. So he um, met him when he was like on the team and the player, and now he's been now he sees him as the coach, and he was making jokes about how like. Back then, he'd call them nicknames, and now it's like, you know, he's the <laughs> head coach at the tie and everything. But he was saying how that relationship kind of also helped develop some of his work and, and the way he looks at Paralympic sports. And so it, it's you can have that relationship between, um, you know, Paralympic athletes and able bodied people and people with disabilities and learn things on both sides of the aisle. So, and, that, and as you can see in, in his case, it was something that started 10 years ago and is still driving what he does today. So yeah. maybe I'll be the same way. You never know. 
catch me in Pyeongchang like tomorrow. Really? <laughs> you can get a flight to Pyeongchang. <laughs> I'm feeling yeah. inspired. Get a passport and go. <laughs> <laughs> Sit in jail yeah, for a little bit. I could if I want to, man. I got my passport. I don't think I got the money, but I can do it. At least I got the passport. He's, he's halfway. He's closer than me. <laughs> I ain't never been out the country. Mm. But one day, maybe it would be for a Paralympics. I, I won't put it past me. I feel like I've, every time I say I'll do something or not mm-hmm. do something, I end up doing the complete opposite. So I'm just going to like leave it out there. Yeah. If you asked me three years ago if I'd be doing a radio show with you know, my guys about Paralympic athletes, I would look at you like you were crazy because I didn't even know I was going to be in journalism. So yeah. it goes to I show. Know, I didn't know I was going to wake up. I didn't know this morning, um, later on in the day, I was going to be doing <laughs> a radio show about Paralympic athletes. The last minute wow. filling. I, I, get, I get a text at like 2 o'clock. I'm getting ready to take a nap. Hey, Alex, can you come in and produce? I was like, okay. In the bullpen. <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> kind of just throw me in. But Coming okay. in clutch, ninth inning. <laughs> this is why you got to have friends with the clutch gene. You can't have the friends you hit up, you know, and the only thing they want to do is go out and party. You got to have friends that come through when you need them. All right, man. That's, that's why I try to keep my, my week open. That right. In cases like these, man, I'm ready. <laughs> we took away Alex's sleep time, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's all love. It's, it's fine, yeah. man. It's all good. Anyways, we've got some Illinois hockey coming up here in a few minutes, so we got to close the show. Mm-hmm. It's not but sled hockey, so. Not uh, sled hockey. Not Illinois as hockey. exciting. There's my bias for that. <laughs> <laughs> An Illinois hockey match here on WPGU at 7 p.m. in 24 minutes, but who's counting? <laughs> um, so before we end the show, I just want to give a shout-out to a good friend's I lost a couple days ago, yesterday. I don't know. I lost count. Good friend named Paul Pivosey. Kind of inspired my journalism career. You knew how to teach reporting and writing, and you knew how to make you believe in yourself and confidence, and that was what he really taught. So, yeah, he inspired the whole thing, and he listened to our show. One of the last things he told me, James, was about you. What? <laughs> yes, because he saw the picture. Oh. He saw the picture from last week when James, side story, pushed me out of the yard. My wheelchair went to sleep, and it didn't turn back on. So James pushed me out of the yard back to my dorm room. Wheelchair ride, got a picture, and my friend Paul saw it. He said, outstanding Mr. Boyd. Oh. So, Much appreciated. <laughs> kind of gave me chills right there. Uh, <laughs> I mean, because really, awesome. we yeah. were just clowning around. Right. But um, I, that 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 picture that kind of just sums up what what it's been like. It's been a fun ride. Help each other out when we need to, and and I think more than anything, we've learned on this show that life kind of happens. So when it does, we kind of pick each other up and, and and keep it rolling. Yeah, and that's why I'm very grateful for you, James and Alex and Will and. Oh, Everybody man. else who's been on here. Yeah, um, dude, this is my first day, man. This is I know, crazy. right? <laughs> Ooh, man, I didn't expect this. <laughs> Bring Ooh. tissues. Yeah, I brought a, heavy. A, I brought a little uh, T Rex if you want that. <laughs> might be a little on this. Must, it might be a little rough on the eyes <laughs> or the <laughs> cheeks. <laughs> Anyways, from Tatiana, Michael mentioned all the people that helped us out. I'm very thankful. So, for James Boyd, Alex Aguilera, Jason Liggett. Where are you, Jason? <laughs> Jason is busy tonight, but he's still got the camera. It's my guy. And James, we've got the lights. I know. You can see me better <laughs> this week. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Anyways, I'm Ryan Wilson. Thanks for listening to Roll the Lana here on WPG1071 and watching us on UPTV. Bye.